Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number seven, focusing on the D note. Get ready and some coffee. And remember, if you feel like your guitar playing is not getting better, trust me, just keep practicing. I mean, honestly, my guitar playing used to be so bad, my own guitar filed a restraining order against me. Yeah, attempting to get the court to compel me to stop picking on it. Yeah, I don't even know where it came up with that sexual harassment charge. Lies, dang lies, I tell you. And anyways, let's, let's get to the guitar. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project is useful. So let's go back to that first tab for the overview. We're looking at the C major scale and related modes. Started out looking at it in open position for us. Open position defined as frets one through three. Noting that this E represents the heavy or low E string, the one closest to the ceiling. The funnest way to map out the notes in the scale in open position is to create the chords from that scale and map them out. So we started out with the one chord, the C major chord, mapped it out, discussed it in detail, went to the four chord because it also has a major chord construction, mapped it out, discussed it in detail, and then the five, and then back to the minors, which is the second, then the third, the sixth, and finally to the diminished, which is the seventh. After having done that, we have basically mapped out all the notes in open position, but done so by building the related chords and if we put all those notes in position, it would look something like this. We then wanted to move to the middle of the guitar and learn that position, this time not by constructing chords first, but first by looking at the scales. So we mapped out the scales in fret 5, basically, or frets 4 through 8, that position. And you could call that position a G-shaped position or I would call it position number one. We discussed all of the basic notes that we can hover around within that position and then now we're going to the uh, second position on fret seven. We've discussed it a little bit in detail and now we're going to basically be focusing in on the D note in this position starting on fret number seven and basically seeing how we can tie it into the prior position and to the open uh, notes. So let's go over a quick recap of all the colors here. I know this is overwhelming. This is basically the fretboard, low string on top is what we're doing here because I think that's easier to see. We started out by laying down the foundation of all the notes in the C major scale in blue, and then we put on top of that the five notes of the pentatonic scale for the C major or related minor pentatonic scale in green. And then on top of that, we put the, and these all fit on top of each other. So, and then we're going to be putting on top of that, the D, which is our point of focus this time, and the chord that would con be constructed, which would be a minor chord. This would be the one, the three, and the five of that D minor chord. So that means that basically our major points of focus over here are the light green, which is going to be the one. The second most important note is going to be the three, and that's going to be the F. And then the third is going to be the A uh, in yellow. And then all other notes that are colored are fair game, and all the white notes are like lava. You don't want, we don't want to hit uh, the white notes. They have been excluded. And then we can see that we have uh, this red box represents the last position which you could call a g uh, shaped position and the reason for that is if you were to because if i think of myself in the c major scale then this position you can see that that g shape basically fits within here that's going to be this boom 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 so you could call it that if you want i would also call it position one personally and then this is going to be position two which has some overlap you could call this an uh, e-shaped position because if you look at a c chord construction within it 
you're going to get basically a bar chord, which is basically an E shape if it were in open position. So you could name the whole shape based on that if you want. I'm going to call it uh, position two as well. We'll get into that caged uh, system later. So we're focused on this yellow area. There's overlap between the two. That's what I would call like the pivot points between these two shapes. So on the top string, here's the first shape. Here's the second straight. You've got, you've got these two notes, uh, fret seven and eight in between. Now I'm going to make the red one a little bit shorter so that we can focus just on the yellow. And then within this yellow area, we're going to focus on the D and the D construction is a D minor. So this has given us an idea. These yellow notes are giving us an idea of the chord shapes within here, which is a little bit more difficult probably for most people uh, on this shape for the minor chords because this is like a, a like a, a G minor uh, shape. So we'll talk about that shortly, but that's what the yellow notes are trying to do. They're basically, in this case, highlighting all the one threes and fives <laughs> in this case, but they're, they're trying to focus on just those main shapes uh, that we can be building on the D that we're focused on. And then the red notes over here are also trying to focus on the main shapes that we can see once we start going back up and down uh, the guitar. So they happen, so notice not all of, I didn't highlight this one even though it's a fifth, right, with the red. And then over here, this is the main shapes that we kind of focus on in open position, which of course in this case is the D, is the D minor. So you've got this open string and then these, these strings here, so that's gonna be, so that's what basically uh, the color scheme is doing. Our focus here is in the yellow area. Now we're in the C major scale, but we're basically focusing in on a D. Couple ways that we could do that to show it in open position here. Uh, you could play around in a C, starting and stopping on the C, making it the tonic, like a C, and then go into in like an A minor and an E minor, and then maybe work in that D, and then back to a C or something like that. But if you want to practice the D in particular, you might try to make it the tonic. So instead of us going to a D minor scale, we're going to stay here and say, I'm just going to make the two the central point, which means we're basically playing in Dorian, but I'm not going to think about it in Dorian now. We'll talk about the modes more formally later, but it, Dorian would just mean that I'm going to formally make it number one, and then everything else is going to be the same. I'm just going to shift it, the numbering system, making it number one. But I'm going to think about it as though I'm just going to play around the two chord, making it the tonic. Easiest way to do that to stop and start on the two chord, on that D. So I could, I could start playing on the D and then play anything else within here, like a C, like an A minor, like an E, and then end back on the D. Now, it's a little bit more difficult to make the D the tonic than the C or the A, in this case, or the major or minor, but the Dorian is pretty common, so it's not too difficult to try to make it feel like that D is now your home base. However, we can do that same idea that's saying, well, what's the fifth? Even though it's a minor this time, it's a minor chord, the fifth is an A, so I could say the A should resolve back to it, back to the, to the D relatively well. Now, the A is, if I construct it in this, uh, in the C major, it's an A minor, not an A major. But the, that doesn't resolve quite as nicely as an A major because the, the A major will have uh, this white note right here that's going to then conform or have that half step going up to the D. So we can kind of cheat if you want to do think about it that way, right? We can play like something in a D to a C to an, an E, and then I'm going to go to that A minor I'm going to convert it to a major to resolve back to, a, to a, a, a D minor. And that might help us to get that resolution back home again. You could take it a step further and make it uh, a dominant seven, which means you, you play these two and you, you know, lift your middle finger up, revealing the G. And that might even give you a different, uh, you know, resolution feel back home. So just a couple things if you're having trouble keeping the D uh, as <clears throat> the home base, but it's like the Dorian is fairly common, so you should be able to make that feel like the tonic 
uh, fairly easily uh, any, in any case. Okay, so then we're going to go back up to our, our fret on the 7 through 10, position number 2, and we're going to be playing around the D, which means we're basically playing in Dorian, but thinking of it as the 2 note. And we can do this a few different ways. We can play everything in this position and practice just this position. We can try to blend from the prior position to this position, or we can try to go from the home base position and find lines, or we can go from the home base position jumping up to this position, or go from the home base position and find lines to kind of maneuver up into this position. So those are the tactics you might use to practice uh, this uh, the D in the uh, position number two, fret seven through ten. So let's first just think about basically playing through the scale in this position, making D kind of like the center point, basically the tonic. So when I'm in this position, we might start like here because, well, here it is a B. I start with the B, but that's not where we want to start here because we want to be thinking of it uh, starting on the D. So I can start on the D. Now I could make that the one, which means I would be converting to a Dorian, but I don't want to convert to a Dorian here. I want to just keep on thinking of it as the two. I'm just going to go around my scale thinking of it as basically the two. So I can, I can count up. I'll do it this way first, uh, just end the guitar. We're going to say this is the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one back to the two. So there's our two, 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 two. And so all I did there was just count it up. So I'm just going from, this is gonna be the two, and then I'm just staying in the shape, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, back to the two. And then we can count up again and do the same thing uh, and walk it up and back, getting that Dorian kind of feel in our mind and kind of working on our fingering position. Now, as we do that, we might also want to play the chords every time we get to like the D, every time we get to the two. So let's think about the shapes that are in here. Now, the, the shapes are a little bit more difficult to see in the minors sometimes. We'll talk about the cage system a little bit later, but you can see you have this one, the one, uh, the three, and the five. So you're kind of leaning back, you're kind of leaning back this way. <laughs> And that's going to be, you can think of that as like a G shape, because if you had a, if, it, if this was a major, then the third would be right there. So you have this like G shape that we have to play like this if it was a major, and then we drop the third. So the third would be here if it was a major and it drops back to the minor. So you basically have that top half of the G shape is, is one way that you can kind of uh, think of that. And then uh, we have this shape underneath, which is still kind of part, you can think of it kind of as part of the G shape, because if you were to bar that, you'd have these two here, which is a little difficult to do because you don't want to pick up that one. But you can play it this way. And that's going to be still a D, but it's inverted where the D is on the bottom. And then you've got these three notes over here, which is on the high end. Uh, pitch wise and once again it's inverted where the D is basically on the bottom now on the edge right here between these two you've got this which is probably the easy thing to play down here it's kind of like your A shape and then you could also add this A down here and play it like this so that is oft, often a common way to play uh, that D. It's a nice one to reach uh, as well. And it's basically part of this, this full you know, bar shape on uh, position number one. But it kind of crosses over in that limbo land and you can pull up that piece of it right there. All right, so those are your major home base shapes. So if I was gonna walk through this, so I'd say this is gonna be the two right there. And if I was to make a chord out of it, we go da, 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 two, three, four, what, wait, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two. And then this note, when I get to this note, which is the other two, 
then I could basically play the ones right above it. Or you can go back to this right there. And then two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, and then these three. So now I got down to this one down here and I play these three. And then I'm gonna go, this is two, one, uh, or eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then I can go, there's the chord, or, or. So now I'm back on this D, did, and then I can go back down and say, two, uh, one, or eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then do, 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 do. So, and just try to go like walk up and back and get it in your mind what the chord shapes are a little bit that way. And you can also you don't have to walk up and sit and name two, three, four. You can just walk up the shape and start and stop on the D's. <laughs> Make, and then play the chord on the D to kind of get that in your mind as that's the place that you're in. But I think actually counting it up from two uh, is, is useful. So that's going to be that. And then uh, once we have that in our mind, we could try to play everything within the shape. So what we've learned now is the D in here, the C, uh, and what else? We did the F and the G. So we have this shape that we can play this way, do, do, do. so we've got that, or we can play it this way, we've got the C shape, we've got the F shape, and then I'm going to go back to the D shape, which I'll play like that, so we have those major shapes, we, have, we also know that the A shape would be here. So if I look at that A, because that's my resolution one, this would be an A minor moving forward. The major would pull that pinky, which sounds a little out of place, but might be able to resolve more easily to the D, to the D minor. So that's one, one thing that we can do. We can start playing these within here and say, here's a D, here's like a C. Going to the C, here's like an uh, an A shaped F, and then possibly back to the D. And we can go D. We're gonna go. This is a this is an E shaped C. This is an A shaped F uh, major, and then we also did a G C shaped G and then back to the D, something like that. So let's do it one more time. We've got like a D, you might go to like a C, an F, and then you might try to close it out with an, an A minor to an A major, which might then help us to resolve back to a D, which will play outside here something like that. So you can start to kind of put those together in one position uh, within here. You can also kind of try to noodle once you get good at those switches, whatever, whatever combo you like, you could put in noodling in between the notes. Uh, you can also, if you don't know all of those positions here, we could say, well, I know all of my positions in the open position and use the old jumping strategy just to see if I can work around the D up here with some more like picking around stuff. So to do that, we might first say, okay, well, what kind of things, if I'm saying this is my home D, what kind of things are around it that I can kind of pick around? So I, what can I reach? Now, I'm not going to reach forward because I'm thinking of leaning back into my position. So one thing I can do is start with my arpeggio like that. From there, we can pivot, which is a little tricky because we want to be pivoting basically on the pinky but I can see what is available to me up there. I could say, all right, well, if I'm on that pinky, I have this, these notes available, so I could do something like. 
be a little bit easier for me to basically uh, change my fingering on this one to be basically this finger so I'm not using my pinky there which means that this box is going to be easier to get to and I could slide back and forth between that note behind I also note that this whole column is basically good for me to play as well as this whole you know column over here so I could then say all right if I'm starting here and then instead of Picking up the full chord with that A, I can end with just the one and the three, which gives me the flavor. Pick up this whole bar. I know this whole thing is good to go except for that G, so I can kind of bar. do something like that and then if I go down here I could say all right here's my other D so I could see what is kind of below that D and then maybe what's above the D so I could say if, if that's the D anything I'm starting on I could say well the third of a minor is always like that distance up so there's that F that's useful I have that E The fifth, instead of being here, like it normally is, is because of the kink of the tuning up here. So that's a little bit tricky to remember sometimes. And then you've got this G, which is right here. And then I can always end this off by hitting these three, which are above it because that's the full chord. So I can go above it and hit those three to end it off. Or go to the string above it, back to that shape. Something uh, like that. So there's that one. Now another one that's kind of interesting here is you also have the open D, which is, that's what's great about the minors. So this open string right here is interesting to play with because if I hold down this D right there and then I have this string open, you get two Ds. Which is like a double powerful D, right? And then it's kind of interesting. You have a, you have a uh, third right there so I could go back and forth uh, from the third up there, and then I have a fifth right here as well, so, and I have a fifth right here. So I could go, I like to do something like the shuffle. So I'm kind of muting, I'm muting the E, and I'm trying to mute the A with my thumb, and then I'm just reaching up to that F to hit the third, and then I mute it to get that double stop D. To, to have that open D open is kind of a fun uh, little thing to have there. And then you have your D down here. So that's going to be this D. And then you could you have available to you if you use that as your, as your home base. So now we're here. I could say, okay, well down here I've got this little box that we can play. And I can always go back to this shape as my as my D down here, even though it's inverted. So I've got...
So those are the basic general options that we can kind of tinker with here. So, so then we, once we have the tinkering options, we can then say, okay, what uh, we could, we could, so now let's try to do our jumping thing. So if I'm over here in open position and I play like a D here, and then I'm gonna target something up top. So I'm gonna go back from there and say, okay, the easiest one to target might be this D. So I'm gonna say, all right, I'm gonna kind of jump up to this D and then see what I can do with that. And that might be easiest to hit that with my ring finger if I'm jumping up there. Something like that, maybe. So I'll go from here. between like a D and uh, like uh, an open position and something else like a D and then a C or something like that and, and then you could noodle around up here in the C but if you're focusing on the D maybe I just noodle around on the C over here so if I do the same thing D and then I jump up and then to the C I'm just doing my normal thing on the C and then D We could target then this D, same kind of thing. So we can say, okay, if I'm just gonna jump up to that D, what can I then play around that? Well, I have then this. And I've got that cool. Jumping up to that F and back down, having that open D. So I could do something like. to the C, to the D, C, D, So then, so then that's that one. And then we could do a similar thing basically up here. But the next thing we could do is say, well, what if I'm in this middle position here and I wanna, com I wanna switch from this middle position up into this position up top. So we could say, okay, well, where's my D in here is right here. And that's basically a bar chord. So this is kind of an overlapping position. So now you've got this bar chord, which is a quite common D right here. So it's, this is an A minor kind of D position that's, that's in between these two shapes. So that's gonna be boom, 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 boom. I'm kind of focusing in on that D. So if we're in this shape, whoops, is that, that's not right. Sorry about that. It's right there. Okay, so then you have that in this shape. Here's your D here, and then here's your D here. And then this shape, you can also play the bottom part of it like this. 
which is just these three notes. And then you could pick up that A down here and play it this way. So clearly this one, this bar shape, kind of moves in, pivots into this shape. If you move into this shape here, like this, or that shape. So once I get into this shape, I can pivot around this D right here. And then pivot into, into that shape. So then, the, so then it's just like, okay, what do I want to do basically in between? I can kind of walk between those two possibly. So I can be in this shape and say, okay, and then I want to move up kind of to this D up top. And then how could I do that? Well, I can start with this and then I can, I can just walk in this shape. The easiest pivot point is this finger. So I can just be like, okay, right, I'm going to go from here and go. I'm on that shape, which I can go. Whoops, that's a major. All right, and if I can walk that back, now I'm on this pinky. I basically just walked it up, right? And I'm just saying, and so then I could uh, make it a little bit more interesting, possibly doing some double stops or something as I'm walking that. So I could be just doing something like. I'm hitting these three notes and then I can go I noticed that's something that we, we were able to do uh, before and then I know that uh, I can go up to here and then I'll convert that into a D or something like that and, and then I can I can walk that back and say boom double stop double stop and something like that back to my D here we could play the the bottom half of this shape so I'll try to move from this bar chord to this D and then into that kind of shuffle pattern so if I start off at this bar chord I might play with that a bit like saying this release the pinky that gives me basically the seven because I know all of these notes and this whole bar are good. So I can then say, okay, I'm going to go. And now I'm just playing this bar. I'm not even worried about what it is. I'm just going to play basically that whole bar. And then maybe. And now I'm basically playing uh, an A. Then I moved up to this D. There's the, the third of the D. And then, and there's my little shuffle pattern, right? And then I can end it off with that or that. So we might play something like, you know, here's my D. trying to find some patterns between those two those two and then if we go back to the first pat the first uh, position then I can try to say okay let me find a line between my open D over here and then maybe my my D basically up here so then so so what can I do to get between you know those two well I have my finger down here is probably the first one that I can think about because it's going to be easy to just move up. So I'm looking at uh, the finger that's on the, uh, where is it? It's on F, right? So I'm looking at that finger and then I can basically move that up maybe. And that gets us to our familiar uh, little box within here. And then uh, once I'm in the box within here, I have access to this D and then that can bring me up to this D. So I might think of something like this. I can be like, okay. And I'm going to pivot on this finger. I'm just playing within that box. 
And then when I when I get up to here, whoops, I'm looking for that shape right there, which is going to be this is part of my bar chord on the bottom. So that brings me to this shape, which I can then convert to that shape if I so choose, and then reach up to here. So something like that was kind of sloppy but we can get better at it. Right, I can go here. So there's basically a D right there. Back to my D there. And then I'm back to my, my shape, uh, my kind of G, G minor shape D chord like that. So if I walk it back, play this D here I kind of like this little shuffle pattern on the D just playing with that open D in open position so so instead of playing the whole D if I shuffle back and forth between I hold down this A and I let the D ring out then I've got the one and the fifth and then if I hold down this F then you've got the one and the third so you're shuffling between the whole chord I throw an occasional C in there in my shuffle. And then I can also let go. You also have uh, the, well, let's just play with that. So we could say, okay, then we can go, okay. So now I'm just reaching up to that A. And then once I have that, I can follow this finger in back to that A minor there's that and then I'll and I can kind of mirror that shuffle pattern basically letting this open string kind of ring out and then I'm playing everything that's open. I also touched on this string, that's your blues note. So it gives you a little bit of, a little bit of tension if you want to pick that one up, cheating a bit, breaking the rules. But if we if we do if we follow this one up and I just kind of let that D ring out, then I can follow it up through fun to do. try to maneuver up and back between the chords. So that, again, that open note, that's why the minors and, and at least the key of the C are actually quite fun to play because you can kind of work in those open strings, uh, in my opinion. I just learned the minors more than the majors because I've started with A minor, so that's just how it 
worked out for me, but uh, that's the general idea. Now, now if if you were to switch to a D uh, a D minor, just for comparison purposes, instead of a D Dorian, then all the all the chords, all the notes within the chord of the D minor would fit, but it's going to be different. So this is the major scale, uh, which has the uh, which has the sorry this is the major scale which is an F major which is the sixth is gonna be the uh, the minor right so this this would be basically F major or in this case we're thinking of it as the notes the pattern that would be there for a, a D minor and so if you compare this then to what we have up top and if I was to hide to here, right click and hide. So then you can see, <clears throat> you can see you have all, all the notes in there for the D still are in there, but it's not the same pattern, right? The colored notes are not all the same. So just to point this out, it's like if you practice the D as it relates to the C major scale and you focus on it as the pivot point, you're basically playing Dorian and you might say, well, yeah, but I also want to learn the D minor. And you're kind of still learning the D minor because the, the notes in the chord still fit and they will be the same as the D minor, but the relative notes around it are going to be, are, are going to be different. So, and that's what we'll, you know, we'll dive into that more when we get into other modes and what the modes mean, as well as uh, then we can convert the whole thing to other scales. But like I say, I think people get often really confused in terms of what they can play because they we stop we can't figure out which things go together and which uh, do not. So if you really understand, anyways, that's the general idea.